All right, so for this one, again, ladies and gentlemen, we would just want to find, now this one was a little bit different. Um, we are going to, I asked you to find all the intercepts and then do some solution points, right? I'm sorry, not the intercepts. I asked you to do the, all the asymptotes and then, the inter, and then find your solution points, right? So what we're going to do is I'm just going to show you, um, we will do the intercepts again, but I'll do that after the video just to kind of keep this video a little bit short. So the first thing, again, the first asymptote we always want to find is the what? Vertical. Vertical. So remember, vertical is going to determine what is, um, what is going to make our denominator 0. So we set our denominator then equal to 0, because we want to find the values that make it equal to 0. Well, in the last problem, we could just solve for x here, right? But now we have a quadratic with two different, two different variables, or two x terms. I can't just put x on the side and take the square root. I have to use a factoring technique. So I'm going to factor out an x. And I get x times x minus 1 equals 0. Now I can use the zero product property to say x equals 0 and x minus 1 equals 0. Therefore, my vertical asymptotes are when x equals 0 and when x equals 1. All right? Step for 1. Now let's find the horizontal, right? Because we just want to go in order vertical, horizontal. And I'm not going to write down the whole vertical or the horizontal test. Because what we notice is our exponent up top is larger than the exponent in the denominator, right? Our degree up top is larger than the degree on the bottom. So we have, say, n is larger than m. So by using your horizontal asymptote test, you need to know that there is no horizontal asymptote when your degree in the numerator is larger than the degree in the denominator, right? Yes. So now, when we don't have a horizontal asymptote, that now creates an opportunity for us to find an oblique or slant asymptote. So how do we find that? Well, we're going to have to provide long division. So the first thing we're going to do is write x squared. Actually, this is, so I write x squared minus x, x cubed. Uh, plus 0x squared plus 0x minus 1. I'm going to put the zeros as placeholders. Remember when I first did long division? It helps. So you guys don't make mistakes. So x squared goes into x cubed how many times? X, x times, right? Multiply, you get x cubed. x times x gives you negative, or x times negative x gives you negative x squared. And then we could do plus 0 x and then plus 0, because we don't have terms for there. So we subtract the top from the bottom. x squared minus x squared is 0x cubed. I'm sorry, x cubed minus x cubed is 0x cubed. It goes to 0, right? x squared minus um, a negative x squared. Oh, I'm sorry, 0x squared minus a negative x squared now gives you a positive x squared because that's a 0, right? And then we have 0x squared minus 0x squared. That's obviously going to go to 0. And then negative 1 minus 0 would give you negative 1. So now I say, does x squared go into x squared? Yes, it does, one time. 1 times x squared is x squared. I guess I could say, just put those coefficients there. Um, 1 times x squared is x squared. 1 times negative x is a negative x. Subtract. x squared minus x squared is 0x squared. Um, 0 minus a negative x squared is negative x or positive x minus 1. Does x squared go into x? No. So that's gonna now going to be our remainder. OK? Guys, again, I'm not going to get too detailed into this. Once this gets bigger, though, as, this, as my numbers get larger, what gets, what's gets larger faster, the numerator or the denominator? The denominator, right? Because you're always going to be squaring, right? So this is always this is going to get bigger, much faster than that's going to get bigger. So as you have a denominator that keeps on getting bigger and bigger, what do these? What does this whole number approach? Zero, right? So since it approaches zero, it actually is not going to affect my slant asymptote. Teachers, part of the interruption. Teachers, seniors have been released from the gymnasium back to class. 
They have been instructed that they have three minutes to return to class. Please mark them tardy if they are not back in class in three minutes from now. Again, seniors have been released from the gymnasium. They are instructed to return to class within three minutes. Mark them tardy if they are not back within three minutes. Thank you. Have a good day. Okay. So, you guys see how we get there? So, your slant asymptote, all you're going to do is you're going to take your quotient, not dealing with your remainder because your remainder actually um, it goes to zero. And that's going to be your slant asymptote, y equals x plus 1. Make sense with your asymptotes? We'll talk about solution points next. Cool? Any questions? No further questions. Okay.